Hey yo, Antonio. In this video, we'll be going over some of the main parts that make up the eyeball and what their functions are. For each component, I will give an example of how they are expected to change over time. I'm not attempting to make any specific diagnosis here, but rather share with you some general trends that parts of the eyes go through as we age so we can better equip ourselves in being able to adapt to these changes, let alone being able to delay some of them. I made this video because human eyes are roughly the same. It's a fact that everybody in the world is going to develop cataracts as long as they live long enough, and that eyes typically tend to turn red when they are either infected or inflamed. So buckle up because we have a lot to get through. Starting with the cornea. The main role of this tissue is to bend light properly onto the retina. In fact, two thirds of all the light bending in the eye happens on the cornea making it the most refractive structure in our body. Consequently, the shape of the cornea becomes really important in achieving excellent vision. Take for example, a perfectly spherical lens as opposed to a cylindrical one. You can see that the spherical lens produces a nice clean image on the wall, whereas the cylindrical lens stretches the image out, leading to unclear vision. The same can be said for our cornea. In the case of astigmatism, the cornea is not perfectly round and one meridian is steeper than the other, creating a mismatch between the two focal lengths which leads to smudged vision. Astigmatism tends to be permanent. Once you have it, it doesn't get any better. So the approach should be to prevent it from happening in the first place. Individuals with astigmatism tend to struggle when reading fine print and are likely to make mistakes with similar letters like the N's, M's and H's, as well as numbers such as 6's and 9's. If you want to know what it feels like to have astigmatism, then feel free to watch this video. Laser eye surgeons can reshape the cornea in the form of refractive laser surgery to create an optimal shape for the light to be bent, producing clearer vision. Although there isn't enough evidence to suggest that eye rubbing directly induces astigmatism, it is a well-known fact that individuals with keratoconus, which is high astigmatism, are more likely to rub their eyes excessively as their astigmatism worsens. To minimize the risk of eye rubbing, make sure your eyes remain moistened at all times. If they feel dry, they probably are. Your ultimate goal is to allow the eyeball and the tear production system to work in unison with one another. Hot compressors and using appropriate eye drops can be helpful tools in achieving this. The iris works very much like the aperture blades in a camera lens. They shrink and expand depending on how much light should be allowed into the eye. During an eye exam, your optometrist may use a dilating agent to paralyze the muscles in the iris to widen the pupil while closely examining the retina for diseases such as diabetic retinopathy, or retinal detachments. The iris itself can also show signs of disease, such as pigment dispersion syndrome leading to glaucoma and acute uveitis, because an inflamed iris tends to respond sluggishly. Through time, the iris muscles lose tension and the pupil size diminishes as we age. This is why we primarily see larger pupils in younger individuals. The conjunctiva is one of the most misunderstood parts of the eye. This is because it is invisible. The conjunctiva is a transparent tissue that lines the inner parts of the eyelid all the way up to the limbus. You may often come across the word conjunctivitis being used when someone describes an eye infection. And they're not wrong. Eye infections do in fact lead to conjunctivitis. But so can other non-infectious causes, such as an inflammatory acute uveitis or even an allergic rhinoconjunctivitis. When one is treating conjunctivitis, blindly assuming that it is bacterial can be unwise. Antibiotic eye drops will not do anything for such things as a viral or an allergic conjunctivitis, and in the case of fungal keratitis, not having the necessary medical attention may lead to permanent vision loss. Be on the lookout for certain clues the next time your eyes show signs of redness. If the conjunctiva is red and inflamed, then think about the reasons why they are and seek an optometrist for help if you are unsure. 
The ciliary body and the crystalline lens work hand in hand, and this is why I coupled them. Think of these two as our autofocus system, but instead of shifting the lens position as a typical camera lens would, our eyes have the ability to change the shape of the lens itself as it wishes. When one is viewing closer objects, the ciliary muscles constrict, releasing the tension within the zonules leading to the fattening of the crystalline lens, also known as accommodation. The younger we are, the better we are at doing this. And it's not because our ciliary muscles weaken as we age, but rather it is because the crystalline lens itself becomes more rigid over time, from a soft and squishy lens when we are young, to a hard and rigid one when we are older. Assuming that you've had perfect vision for all your life, that is, no myopia or hyperopia, your crystalline lens has an expiry date of about 45 years, until you will struggle to read within an arm's length, without straining. This is called presbyopia, and will affect pretty much everyone you know, including yourself. Not only that, the lens will also become less clear and transparent as we grow older. And when it gets to the point where it starts to interfere with your vision, then you have yourself a cataract. This is not only universal across human eyes, but it also affects other animals, such as dogs and cats. For humans, there is the option of cataract surgery, which completely removes the crystalline lens, replacing it with a clear plastic one. Our ability to accommodate only worsens as we age, and there is very little we can do about it. Quite often, people blame their glasses as the cause of the accommodation deteriorating, but reading glasses have nothing to do with the decline of accommodation, as it's been documented countless times that it will naturally decline with age. My belief is that one should make the most of what they have now. If their crystalline lens is set to expire at the age of 45, and they happen to be under that age, then simply enjoying the comfort of not having to wear glasses for everyday near tasks is a big win. The retina is a sensor that detects light. The middle, also known as the macula, is densely populated with cone photoreceptors that are good at detecting fine detail, whereas the peripheral retina predominantly has rod photoreceptors that are better in low light environments. The retina is a delicate piece of tissue that shouldn't be tampered with, as it serves a critical role in the delivery of messages to the brain. An optometrist's worst nightmare would be a retinal detachment, when the retina starts peeling off of the eye. Those that are myopic, or nearsighted, are more prone to such catastrophes, so the smart approach is to delay myopia as much as possible, until the prescription stabilises during the mid to late 20s. Be on the lookout for symptoms of retinal breaks in the form of new floaters suddenly appearing and flashes of light randomly shining in the periphery. The retina, like every other living tissue, needs to feed on nutrients and also dispose of waste product. This is facilitated by the Bruch's membrane. As we age, the Bruch's membrane's ability to carry out this exchange diminishes and it starts accumulating waste product. And this may become the hallmark of AMD, or age-related macular degeneration. A widely known method of delaying AMD, thanks to the RADS2 study back in 2012, is to include plenty of green leafy vegetables into the diet, having regular exercise, and not smoking. So I would encourage those who may have a family history of AMD, especially to implement those changes. The optic nerve is the USB cable that connects your eye to the brain. Imagine your computer with a webcam. The webcam captures light and signals to the computer via a USB cord about what it sees. Now imagine the same setup with your eyes and brain. The eye captures light and signals to the brain via the optic nerve about what it sees. When the optic nerve degenerates, we call that glaucoma. The exact mechanism of how it happens is still up for debate. But one thing we know for sure is that people with high intraocular pressures and a family history of glaucoma are more likely to get it themselves, and it is more common in the elderly, although it can happen at any age. 
You may not like visiting your optometrist because there's a good chance you may be puffed in the eye to measure your eye pressure. But it's important for us to routinely check this as glaucoma leads to irreversible vision loss and is completely asymptomatic, meaning that you will never know you have it until you get them tested. The eye is a complex structure with many things happening at once and changing as we age. For those that have not yet have their eyes tested, I would highly recommend you do so, even if it's to confirm that your eyes are as good as you claim. Show some love for your eyes in the form of eating healthy, practicing digital hygiene, and protecting them from the sun. But that is all I have for you today. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then it will be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.